It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about CCTV viewer. Now I've shown you a lot of NVR software in the past. I've shown you Shinobi and Zoneminder and iSpy Agent and Frigate and Viseron and, and just several others and they're all great and their point and their purpose is to record, to have that recording of your video cameras and your surveillance cameras and things like that around your home or your business or wherever you have those things at. And they all do it pretty well and they all do it a little bit differently so it's really one of those things where you have to decide which one do i like but today i've got one that's really a viewer a few weeks ago scotty and i did a live stream and when we were done he and i were just talking and he showed me a, a piece of software and he was looking at all of his cameras I'm like well what is that software you're using and so he told me about it and i went and checked it out and it's open source it's really really nice but this is a viewer. This is not a recorder. This is not an NVR. This is just for having a really nice laid out grid view of your cameras. And it's, a, it's an installed application on your Linux system. It looks like there also may be a version on the App Store. I don't know if this is the same uh, developer, but they have the same name. So um, something you could check out as well if you're an Apple user there. But yeah, definitely um, pretty pretty cool software. So we're going to install this and check it out and kind of see how it runs. I think you're going to like this one. It's really nice. And again, I've been using it for a few weeks. It's been great. It uses very low resources when I set up my streams. And I'll show you kind of how to set up your video streams, stuff like that. And uh, you can kind of check it out. But yeah, I've got seven cameras that are all um, streaming at the same time around my home. And they're pretty great. Now, when you try to run a full 4K or full HD stream constantly to your machine, it will start to eat up a lot of uh, memory and bandwidth and, and CPU cycles depending on the machine you've got. So you may need a graphics card if you're going to do that. But in this case, you don't have to do that. You can use the substream, and that's a little bit lower resolution, but plenty good enough to see on something like this where it's a grid layout. So we're going to get an installation of it and talk about how to use it right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So I'm going to have all the links in the, in the show notes as always so that you can see everything that's going on here and figure out how to do it. But really, this developer, you could either build this from scratch or you can use a snap. He makes it into a snap for Linux systems, so you want to have snapd installed. Now, if you're not running your Ubuntu or Debian-based distribution out of the gate, you may not have snap installed, but it's easy to get installed on most of the distributions. On Fedora, it's just sudo dnf install snapd and then hyphen y if you don't want to prompt you on OpenSUSE, it's going to be just sudo zipper install snapd uh, on arch uh, there is a little bit more of a process so i'll let you arch users who should know what you're doing get out there and find out how to install snapd on it but once you've got snapd installed it's a really straightforward installation for this software which is pretty great so i'm just going to go i'm going to open up my terminal real quick here and I've made the font a little bit larger for you folks over on the uh, mobile devices. But if you just do um, sudo snap and then search, you can look for the thing you're looking for. And I think if we do this, if we just do CCTV, it may find it. Let's find out. Put in my super user password here. And this is just on my straight desktop that I'm running. So you can see right here, a CCTV viewer, and it's a 019, and it's in a Git repository kind of set up here. So there's different information here that's going on, but this is the one that we're looking for right here. So all we gotta do is I do sudo snap install. And here I'll clear out the terminal in fact, so we can do this sudo snap install cttv viewer, just like we saw it there in the listing. And we're just gonna hit that button right there, enter, and it's gonna start doing its thing. It's not a very big install, so it should go pretty quickly. And you can see it's going pretty fast there. I'm running this over Wi Fi. And it's done. That took all of about 20 seconds. It just did not take very long at all. But we've now got CCTV Viewer installed. Uh, so if we go and just start typing it in, there it is. So filters down pretty quickly. It's going to boot up. Now it's going to have a couple of live streams that it tries to start up. 
automatically. So one is just an, an image that blinks here that somebody's streaming. And then this one is somewhere else. I don't know what city this is, but it looks like they've had a lot of snow. So uh, feel bad for them because that looks awful to me. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really kind of what you get out of the box. Now, you've got a lot of settings and things like that that we're going to go through so that you can kind of see how this is set up. It's really not too hard to get things going. So we're going to kind of go through and change what these are looking at, and then we'll look at the settings as well. All right, I've put this thing into a little bit bigger full screen mode here just so you can see everything that's going on. So again, you get these two um, kind of presets, I guess, out of the box here. But there's a lot of stuff over here in this right on this toolbar. And if you just hover over it, it expands out like that. And then if you move away from it, it goes away. So it comes out on its own. And you've got a few different options here. So you've got this kind of top one and it just expands when you hover it and you can see it's his GitHub. So if I go over this next one, it'll expand. And this is really kind of how this is going to be laid out. So right now we can see that it's set up as a two by two and it's set up for a 16 by nine screen. And then you've got this, but it acts like a toggle. So this is a toggle for full screen mode. So if I toggle it, you can see now it jumps out. My, my sidebar is hidden over there, my, my toolbar. And then I can just toggle it again and turn it back off. And it goes back out of full screen and kind of back to this smaller size windowed mode. And then if we, if we just look over here again, so you can change how many things you're seeing. So you can change your grid. So this is a two by two grid. If you have seven cameras like I do, it's going to be smarter to go to the three by three grid like this and you can even go to a 4x4 grid if you need to if you have a lot more cameras than that it's pretty great so pretty easy to switch that up and then you can just go here to one so let's go back to our 2x2 for now and it'll load up our frog here again in a minute i'm sure but when we want to change what we're looking at that's where you go over here and you've got this viewport mode so we've got this viewport and you says you see it says viewport number one right here so we know that we're working on number one there and then it gives us the url and it gives us a little bit of whether we can mute or unmute that camera. And then we've got a little bit of information here about FFmpeg and what it's doing. So if you want to set up your own camera, you need to get the actual camera URL that includes the username and password if you have one to log in. So like I use Raillink uh, cameras and they use the RTSP stream and it's RTSP colon slash slash. So here I'll even type it kind of back here. So in this case, most RTSP streams have this format. The make and model of your camera is going to highly depend on what you actually need. So I'm going to say RTSP colon slash slash. And then you're going to have this user of some sort, some sort of username. And then colon, your password for whatever that camera is. And then an at symbol. And you're going to have the IP address of the camera. So it might be... Uh, 192.168.1.20 is maybe your camera and then sometimes you'll have a uh, port 554 and then you may have like a slash h265 and then slash pre you know preview 01 sub so in this case this would give us a substream but this is what one of one of your camera URLs would look like. Now I have this kind of same looking URL. Yours may be slightly different. You need to look up for your manufacturer what that URL looks like. Make sure you know the format that they want and that they're expecting, but then you can just set up this RTSP stream. The user and password are things that you would have set on the camera unless it came from your factory with a default setting and you never changed it. It'll be the defaults. Uh, most of them come with some kind of default. You should always change it and have a really good username and a long, strong password so that other people can't access your cameras too easily. Even when they're on the local network, you may not want everybody on the local network to be able to see those things. So this is, this is kind of what it looks like, just so you have an idea of what that URL is. And then you just need to fill that in on the actual camera software there in the background. And that's how you get this to change. So I'm going to go grab... Uh, want some of my URLs and I'll fill them in here and we'll kind of look at my cameras so you can just kind of see what it looks like. All right, I've got a few streams going here. So this is my backyard and this is the side of my house here. And then here's my, my driveway. And then here's just looking out my front door towards the street. Um, this is it. I mean, this is really straightforward. Now, when you click on one of these, you can double click and it'll bring it up larger for you to see a little bit better view of what's going on. Double click again and it goes back down. So I can just do that with any of these different ones and see what's happening and really just kind of get 
what I'm looking for out of the system and see what's going on anywhere around my house, which is great. And this is just a few of my cameras. As I said, I've got, I think, seven total. So I've got a few more that I could add and I could make this a three by three grid. But again, you've got some settings here as well. So if we go down, um, so here you can, you can also set up multiple viewports. So if I switch to two, there's nothing yet. And it's set up in a three by three. So if you have more than four by four, or you want different things, you can have different views as well. And you can switch between those. So there's three, there's four, there's five, there's, and it just keeps adding as you click. But I want these here on the first one, of course, so that we can see what's going on around the house. So let's go check out some of the settings here. So if you just expand this, and, and again, you can just hover, click these guys, and they'll, they'll just contract back down. And then you can click on the settings, and it opens up here in this modal. So you've got a few settings here that you can pick and kind of choose what you want to happen on the system. So I'm going to zoom this in so that you guys can see this better. So this first one just says allow running multiple application windows. So if you'd rather run this like with multiple windows, you can do that. It's going to use up more resources on your system, of course, but it is possible to do that if you check that box. So automatically collapse the sidebar. So that's what you see happening whenever I hover over here and it expands. And then if I move away, it just goes back down on its own. I like that functionality myself, so I'm going to leave it. But if you unchecked it, uh, it, would, it would expand and you wouldn't see it automatically collapse. Uh, show the preset indicator uh, up to you if you'd leave that checked or not it's checked by default so on the viewport you'll notice there's a mute and unmute setting whenever we go back to it and you can basically check this box that says whenever you go to full screen for a, for a camera for this system it'll unmute that for you instead of you having to go click it you've got some default ffmpeg options if you know better ffmpeg options that you would like for the system to use you can go ahead and type those in here and it'll start using those things as well and then this is where I talked about that you can have presets and it would cycle through your presets pretty easily. So you can check the box and then you can tell it how often you want it to cycle. All right, we're gonna just click okay. And we'll go back over here. So you can see it's cycling through each of these. Now setting these up so that you actually get a separate image. You have to go through and set an image on each one. Uh, whenever you click here, it adds a new one as you can see. And if you don't want that anymore, if you didn't mean to do that, you need to left click and hold and you'll see it turn to a minus and you can click the minus to get rid of it. So just be aware there are some little settings, but it tells you kind of how to do things with pop-up information. So it's pretty, pretty useful to be able to do that. Let's go back to our two by two here on number one. So, so that's CCTV viewer. It's a really great, really straightforward, simple application to use and get installed. I think you're really gonna enjoy it and like it. It's very, very useful. I do wanna show you the system monitor. So when you kind of look at this thing, you can see what's going on. It's got a little bit of CPU usage. Not much of the RAM is being used and really nothing of my disks, of course, is being used. But you can kind of see that this is a really simple load. It, it's just not much going on with it. So it's really a very nice little CCTV viewer. It, it's just not doing much. I mean, my system's sitting pretty much idle except for the browser running. And, of course, the recording software is running. So that's going to be using up a lot of this CPU over here right now. Uh, so the CCTV viewer itself just doesn't take up much at all. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time. It's your open source advocate, and I'm back, and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to, get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. Thank you for subscribing.